Welcome to Spell Arm Solutions. Yes, I do. I have a 1911 type pistol. This happens to be the new for 2021 by Springfield Armory. Their new EMP Ronin, or EMP stands for Enhanced Micro Pistol. This is a 3 inch 9mm barrel, which is extremely short, which is why I decided I want to take a look at it. As you know, I'm not the biggest of 1911 fans, but uh, this was very, very unique for as far as uh, what I saw with a really short barrel and being 9mm. And quite frankly, uh, 1911s and 9mm are quite comfortable to shoot. So we thought we'd take a look at this. Now, looking at it, we have a aluminum lower, aluminum frame, uh, and we have a steel slide. We're looking at 24 ounces with this small with this small pistol. We have a single column magazine of nine rounds of 9mm ammunition. Now, for as far as uh, the reliability of this pistol is concerned, you know I always get concerned with 1911s and hollow point ammunition. Generally, a lot of work has to be done on them to get them to work properly with hollow point ammunition. And that was one of the things I was very pleased with uh, with this one. I was able to fire several different kinds of hollow point ammunition without any issue because it has a fully supported uh, chamber and it also has a very nice feed ramp on it. So it was designed to work with modern hollow point ammunition. We have a forged aluminum frame, uh, which is also shortened as you can see to take this the shorter slide. And as a proprietary part, the parts that you're seeing on this pistol are not all compatible with 1911s. In fact, there, there are 11 parts on this pistol that are designed specifically for the 9mm caliber. Those parts are the frame, the slide, the firing pin, firing pin spring, extractor, trigger, plunger tube, plunger tube assembly, the grips, and the magazine. So again, we're looking at the frame here with the, uh, with the forged aluminum. We have a 3-inch match grade barrel. The barrel, as you look at it, it actually looks like a bull barrel because of how thick that it is. Now the sights we have on here are very interesting as well. We have a fiber optic on the front, which is uh, an orange or red color. Then in the back we have a two dot white system. And I have to say, pulling up very, very quickly, having that fiber optic on there is a very, helps you with a very quick sight acquisition, especially when, in, when light. Now, you don't notice as much when it's dark, but during, during the daytime, that really as you draw up, it comes up very, very quickly. Now the trigger pull on here, uh, I tested at four and a half pounds. So you do have a relatively light trigger pull on here. Now, the only thing about uh, carrying this pistol for self-defense that sort of concerned me was the fact that it uh, does not have a firing pin safety. This is a standard 1911, which, and Springfield is kept with the original 1911 design without going with the, the firing pin safety. So you definitely want to make sure you have it in the, in, in the quarter cock or you have it in the cocked and locked position and you have a good secure holster so it can't be dropped. But overall, the trigger, as I said, this is an incredibly accurate pistol with a very nice trigger. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart and show you what the parts look like in the inside. So again, disassembly, make sure it's empty. We're going to pull right back to the notch, pop the lever out, slides right off. Now, when you look at the recoil spring assembly, we have a dual recoil spring, uh, which definitely is necessary for something this small. If you were to have a standard recoil spring, a one recoil spring on here, this thing would take a set so quickly that the spring would wear out and, the, and you'd beat the heck out of the gun. So for a gun this small, you definitely need to have a, uh, you know, a dual spring system like this. Now to remove the uh, barrel, we have to pull out the cap for the recoil assembly. The locking lug down, slide the barrel out, and there we have it. So as you can see, we sort of have 1911 type dimensions on this barrel, but uh, it's got a much smaller hole in it. As you can see here, we have a fully supported chamber and we have a very generous feed ramp. As I said, this is what aids this thing in being able to fire uh, most hollow points that are out there. I tried five or six different hollow points that are more common ones. For instance, I had uh, HST, I had uh, Golden Saber, I had Hydroshock, I had Gold Dot, and I had some, tac or some Hornady uh, XTP as well as some tap loads. Every single one of them cycle just fine with, with, with this. Also, you'll notice right here, we have this little notch in here. This is a loaded chamber indicator. These desks aren't necessarily that great. Uh, if you have a bright cartridge case in there, you might be able to see it. It's there, uh, how effective it is, uh, really hard to tell. Now looking at the frame, as you see we have a standard 1911 type frame. You have your, eject your ejector here. Again, there's no firing pin safety. You do have a beaver tail safety with an, the enlarged area in the rear here for the grip safety. You can see we have very nice wooden grips on here. We have a uh, magazine release. This is not ambidextrous like the like most of them. This is a standard 1911. And the trigger is quite nice too. You see we have a, a longer trigger which has very little creep. Uh, again, it's a very, very well-made trigger. Again, looking at your slide, the sights we looked at. Again, we do not have a firing pin safety, but very, very well-made. Reassembly, we insert with the lock, with the lug down. 
get to reinsert your piece for the uh, recoil spring guide. Lift your lug up, insert from the front, lug up. Insert right back on the frame. Then once we have it lined up, tight and we just pop that into place and there you have it so the overall feel of this is quite well for as far as even even me with larger hands I certainly have quite a bit to get a grip around so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to range we're gonna see how it shoots I was very, very impressed with the way this thing shot right out of the box. Uh, no need to adjust the sights. Uh, we shot at our challenge target. Our challenge targets, we, if you're interested in getting any steel targets, we have a, we have a code, uh, SAS, for 10% off of all the steel targets. As you can see from the target at 25 yards, very, very acceptable for a pistol with this short barrel. Uh, I had no problem drawing this thing out and, and getting headshots on my, on my challenge target. Uh, the accuracy was perfect. Reliability was perfect. Now, when I carry single action, it's not my thing, but there's a lot of you guys out there who prefer the 1911s. You don't have a problem with the cocked and locked. So this is an excellent gun for as far as that's concerned. Um, the nine millimeter, well, why would you carry this a nine millimeter uh, if you could have a 45 in the same size? Well, because you have less recoil. Less recoil means better shots, better hit placement. It makes it more comfortable to get uh, double taps and, and rapid fire with. It gets back on target quicker. So there are benefits to having the 9mm, plus the ammunition is much, is much easier to get these days. There's a lot more surplus ammunition out there, so it's easier to feed. It is less expensive. And one of the things that's really changed over the years, uh, I carried a 45 for quite some time because, of course, you couldn't beat the 45 caliber bullet. With modern ammunition, uh, what you're seeing with new HST, the new Gold Dots, the, uh, the Federal uh, HST, you're looking at also the TAP ammunition, when you really look at the look at the newer projectiles, there is no benefit to having the larger caliber. New ammunition performs excellent with its expansion. It it really negates the need to go with any kind of a, a for any kind of a large cartridge. Uh, and due to the fact that uh, you know that's what's going on, I, I retired my Glock 30 for a Sig P365, uh, utilizing Federal HST ammunition. So. I feel much better uh, carrying 10 rounds or, or 15 rounds than I do carrying, uh, you know, 10 rounds. So the necessity of 45, it's different than it was many, many years ago with, with the use of modern ammunition. So overall, there's a lot of good reasons to go with a 9mm uh, pistol, uh, in, even in the 1911 configuration. Reliability is there, uh, the, accu but the accuracy was quite nice with this one. But uh, overall, you know, it's, the price is $849. This is a very well-made pistol. Uh, no machining marks. You got nice two tone on here. You have uh, very nice safeties, very nice beaver tail. You have a very nice skeleton hammer, a uh, very nice trigger. Uh, everything is enhanced on here. And again, this is not a gun that's put together from a 1911. There was engineering that was done on this to make it specifically into a 9mm. So it's designed uh, to be a 9mm. So I do hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, even better, share. Thank you.